Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and today we're going to be talking about decision fatigue. Now, if you are at a place in your minimalist journey or with decluttering where you're finding it hard to get rid of things or really hard to get started, or there's someone in your life that struggles with that, decision fatigue might be to blame. So today we're going to talk about why it happens and some things you can do to fix it. Guys, decision fatigue is real. It happens to the best of us, especially if you struggle with anxiety. It is common, it happens all the time, and it still happens to me eight years in. It can happen in all sorts of situations, but I find it particularly prevalent one, when you're feeling overwhelmed for any reason, if you've just moved and everything is out of place is another really common time decision fatigue comes in. If you have a lot of stuff or if you're at the point in your decluttering journey where you're getting down to those real hard items. So when you're perhaps going through sentimental items or you've gone through spaces quite a few times and you know you want less items, but you're struggling to know which ones out of the things that are left to get rid of. And that's when decision fatigue can really set in. It can almost be paralyzing. Like you literally, you don't know where to start. You don't know what to get rid of next. And so I have some tips for you that I use with clients and also with myself that can really help if you're stuck in that, what I call the infinite loop of decision fatigue, where you either just don't know how to start or you're paralyzed by not knowing what to do next. You can try some of these tips. Everybody is different. So some of these tips are gonna work really well for you and others might actually have the opposite effect. So take what you need and leave what you don't. Find what works for you in each circumstance and get yourself out of that loop of decision fatigue. Tip number one is start with a really small functional space. This is really good if you're not sure where to start. So many times I talk to people or you guys have told me down in the comments that you get to a place where you're just not sure where to go first. You know you want to simplify your life, but you're not sure what that looks like. So I say start with a small functional space, a place that's going to work really well for you if it's clear. So that's places like dining tables, kitchen benches, entryways, bathrooms, counters, that sort of thing. Select, even if you just select one, you know, 30 centimeter part of a counter that you're gonna work through, you're gonna declutter and you're gonna find homes for those things. It's really achievable, it shouldn't take you too long and it, you can block everything else out. Don't worry about anything else in the room except what that is. If you've just moved into a new house, it might just look like a small box. One box at a time, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So start small and start functional. A place that's actually going to bring you more function into your home and that will allow you to build on your victories and that will help the decision fatigue fade over time. Number two is get rid of items that you've already made decisions on. So if you have a donation box, if you have some trash lying around, if you have stuff that belongs somewhere else, getting those items out is not another decision when you're already feeling fatigued. It will allow you to clear some space so you can see what's really left. And this can be really helpful when you're feeling overwhelmed and you're feeling like you're not making much progress and it's hindering you from moving forward. Get rid of those decisions you've already made and you'll be left with what is waiting for you to make decisions on. Number three, and this Definitely doesn't work for everyone, but it's speed things up. Sometimes when we're processing really slowly, we tend to overthink things and that can bring about fatigue really quickly. So something you can do is just try speeding up the process. Even if you're not decluttering a huge amount of items, just 
speed up the process you're going through those items and make quicker decisions that allows your brain to work a lot faster and therefore even though you're making more decisions which seems like it would be counterproductive because they're faster and you're making progress faster this can be really helpful like i said it doesn't work for everyone sometimes speed is like the counter opposite of what it should be doing and it will actually bring you more stress but Different circumstances and different people need different ideas. And so use this when it's helpful. And if you're finding that's bringing more stress, leave that tip for another time. Number four is a bit like switching gears and that is of finding homes for things. So when you're going through your decluttering process, sometimes when you're just constantly making decisions about to keep or throw away or give away that can get really tasking on our brain and by finding homes for things we're doing quite a number of great positive things instead of making decisions so we are deciding that we're going to keep something and then going and finding a home for it and then you're looking at that area seeing how much space you have left you're allowing what I like to call natural boundaries. There's only so many things that can fit into a cupboard. And so your brain is taking in those, all of those indicators. Oh, I've got a lot of these. Or oh, you're seeing if you already have something in that cupboard where it's gonna go. And it's also just allowing yourself to switch in gears from just straight yes or no things to, okay, if I'm gonna keep it, where is it going to live? Do I have enough space for it? Do I already have something there? Super helpful and also you're organizing at the same time as you're decluttering. Number five, and I use this all the time and that is switch it up. If you find that you're sitting down and you're going through a box and then it's all becoming a bit much, this is a great time to switch it up. So something I suggest for people is just get up and walk around your home and find things that are blaringly obvious that you don't need, whether they be trash or things you've already made a mental decision on to get rid of, just even changing the space. So working on a different project, if that helps you, moving into a different room, all of those things can be really helpful at renewing your mind and switching those gears can allow you sort of a fresh wind to look at things with with new eyes. Another thing along the lines of switching things up that works really well, particularly for children, is looking for your favorite. So when you're going through your wardrobe, just get all of your favorite clothes that you're wearing all the time out of the way first, and then make decisions on the rest. Again, it's just switching in your mind what you're looking for, and it helps you to look at things with fresh eyes. Number six, definitely find the right person for this one, but add a friend. Now, if you look throughout history, we as humans are designed to work alongside each other. It is what we have been doing for a long, long time. And that working beside someone often it keeps us going, it keeps us motivated. It can also help that, you know, you might be talking about something that's not specific to the job you're doing. Often when I'm working with clients, it's not all about what we're going to keep and what we're going to get rid of. It's often just general chit chat. We're telling stories and as we're doing that, we are working with our hands, which is really productive and how our brains work best. If you have a fidgeter in your house, you know what I'm talking about. So if you're busy with your hands decluttering and you have a friend there, that can be really helpful to overcoming decision fatigue. It also allows them to maybe bring their fresh set of eyes. They can help you to feel less overwhelmed and they can break things down for you into smaller chunks when you don't feel like you can. Number seven is set a timer. There is an episode of Kimmy Schmidt, which is this funny show on Netflix, and she, there's this episode where they're cranking something, and she's like, you can do anything for two minutes. And I think that's so true, and particularly with decluttering, cleaning, or organizing, if you set a timer, I feel like it switches your brain into a different gear, and you're really focused just for that amount of time. And because you know the end is coming, you push yourself a little bit harder, your brain knows that it's about to get a rest and so you can sort of move through things at a faster pace and make more decisions in a shorter period of time. Number eight, following on from setting a timer, 
is give yourself a reward. Now, it doesn't have to be that you go out or you spend money. It can be as simple as, I'm gonna work really hard for 15 minutes and then I'm gonna have a cup of coffee or I'm gonna watch my favorite YouTuber or whatever that looks like for you. I'm gonna sit down and play with my kids after I finish this task. That just gives you that extra bit of motivation like I said with the timer, your brain knows that it's about to get a rest really soon and so you can push yourself that little bit further. Decluttering is very much like an onion and that that first layer is often the hardest. So getting started, getting rid of those first few items are often the hardest. So if you are in that position where you're either feeling overwhelmed or not sure where to start, Tips like these, strategies to help yourself get moving or to stay motivated, to reach your goals, whatever that looks like. It doesn't have to be minimalism. It can just be simplifying the space that you're living in. All of these things help. So guys, I hope that these have encouraged you or if you're in that situation that you can refer back to this video and go through some of these strategies to help push yourself further or if there's someone in your life that's struggling with decision fatigue, one that you're gonna be able to recognize what that looks like and perhaps come alongside them with some really good strategies to help them out of it. Because what we know is that we know our brains are fight or flight designed and that when you're in that stage of feeling stressed or overwhelmed, it's really hard to think outside of that. And so if someone comes alongside you and is willing to walk with you through those moments, that is going to be absolutely priceless. So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you are new here, we would love to have you subscribe and join our YouTube family. Here are some other videos I think you might like, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.